Let's continue with the fifth episode of the series Understanding Islam. In the previous episode, we laid out reasons proving that the Quran has been preserved. If you haven't watched it yet, you can click on the link above. In this episode, we will deal with the following question. Muslims claim that the Quran is a revelation from God. How do they, or how can I, know that it is a message from God? This is also a very important question because if it is not really from God, then it is one of the biggest lies in human history, deceiving billions of people. On the other hand, if it is from God, then it is very important for all of us, if not the most important thing of all because we know that God is the absolute authority in the universe and we owe him everything we have. And if there is a message from him guiding us to eternal salvation, then we really should pay attention to it as reasonable people. Firstly, before exploring whether the Quran is a message of God or not, let us check in a general scope whether it makes sense that God would communicate with people or not. Who is God? God is the creator of everything around us. He is the creator of the universe, the galaxies, the stars, the black holes, the earth and all of the living beings. And in everything we look at, we see a great design and a great order. Every being in the universe is fulfilling its role like a member of an orchestra without any mistake or without objection. Earth is following its calculated orbit. In the sun, Nuclear reactions are taking place at such a delicate balance that life on Earth is enabled. On Earth, every living being has a specific role in the ecosystem and the absence of each would affect the balance negatively. Every living being is made of cells and each cell is like a factory with the most advanced technology ever. All of these creations show us the intellect, the greatness of God and his unlimited power and his order. On the other hand, we have humans. Who is a human? Humans have some special attributes with regards to other creations. All other creations obey their objective of existence and they do not have a free will whereas humans do. Humans can make free decisions. We have free will. We have the capacity to understand and evaluate through which we can justify our decisions. We have a capacity to appreciate the universe. We can also build civilizations. And while making decisions, we can choose for the good or for the wrong for the things which are better for society or for the things which can harm others. As a result, the free will of humans manifests itself in society and every single individual is different from the others. Some people just devote themselves to the well-being of the society, whereas some others become criminals and harm tens or hundreds or even thousands of people. And in the end, all of us will die. Well, what happened? Will the greedy and harmful ones benefit from what they have done to others? Will the good people not be rewarded? What is the role of humans? What is the purpose of life? We also said that humans have the special ability to appreciate the greatness of God and the universe. And we see that God has a design in everything and he is all wise. So is it in line with God's greatness and wisdom that humans live and die and they vanish? And there is no absolute justice in this world? Isn't there a greater reason for the creation of this beautiful universe? Or is it for that short life, for that glimpse of a second without absolute justice? In conclusion, it makes sense that God has a greater purpose behind everything, that there will be a day of judgment and afterlife. And if that is the case, we can expect God to communicate with us, to teach us our purpose of existence. He sends us guidance and explains the rules that we need to follow to obey his order, because otherwise it would not be fair to judge humans. So it is very reasonable that God would communicate with people. And we did not create the heaven and earth and that between them in play. Does man think that he will be left neglected? God says in the Quran that we should use our reasoning to differentiate between the truth and lies and we should believe with evidence and reject with evidence. He will place the filth of doubt upon those who do not use their reason. Indeed, the worst of living creatures in the sight of Allah are the deaf and dumb who do not use reason. 
Can one who knows that whatever has been sent down to you from your Lord is the truth be equal to one who is blind? It is only those who are endowed with insight who pay heed. O mankind, there has come to you a conclusive proof from your Lord, and we have sent down to you a clear light. Following these principles, if a message is really from God, then it should fulfill certain convincing logical criteria, such that we have clear evidence that the message is from God. Some of these criteria could be as follows. It should not have any internal conflicts. It should not be in conflict with what we observe in the external world, namely the universe. It should make sense to follow the recommendations and rules. It should be in line with human nature, psychology and sociology. The messenger of the message should be reliable. And maybe there should be some convincing information which proves that it cannot have been written by men. This concludes our current episode. In the following episodes, we will go over each criteria one by one, with God's permission. If you have any comments or questions, please share them with us. And don't forget to subscribe to follow our future videos. Till then, peace be upon you.